Welcome to this Worship on Wednesday service. I wanted us to think about the change in seasons when I was planning this WOW service. And I came across a service online called Change, a reflective service of readings for autumn, written by someone called Chris O'Dell. The reflective service was available to be used and adapted as congregations that wanted. So I've used some of his reflections and added some of mine. So we begin with our call to worship. Come God's people, let us worship the living God, the God of yesterday and tomorrow, the God who makes the present moment holy and crowns us his people with blessings. So as we move into autumn, we see that the nights are getting darker, unfortunately. Schools and colleges have gone back after the summer holidays. The green leaves of spring and summer are becoming a glorious display of browns and crimsons and golds, all lovely colours to see, as nature prepares the trees for the coming harshness of winter. Whole fair is here. Halloween and Christmas things, can you believe it, are in the shops. All is changing. Some changes we welcome, some we don't. Often for us the word change means challenge. So I'd like us to think about what change means to us as Christians who believe in God. Who is the God of yesterday, today and all of our tomorrows. We begin by singing our first hymn, Come, now is the time to worship. As you walk to worship, come just as you are before your God. Come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. Just 
just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come, come, come. So let us come before God in prayer. Loving God, you are God of our past and we adore you. You inspire our mothers and fathers in the faith, sharing their sorrows and joys and giving them courage. And the story of our own lives is shaped by you. God of the present, we adore you. You have brought us together all around where we are, in our homes, ready to worship you. You came in Jesus to share our human life with us and you surround us with your saving love every single day. God of the future, we adore you. Take from us all that separates us from you. Show us your purpose for us as individuals and as your church. And help us all to walk in your way into your kingdom of everlasting love. God of today, of tomorrow, we confess to you how hard we find it to live in the present moment and we sometimes forget to listen for you in that present moment. Forgive us Lord and help us. When we fail to seize the day in our lives as your followers, when we forget to trust in you for our future. Lord, thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for being by our sides now and always. The Lord hears our prayers. Thanks be to God. Amen. We're now going to sing, This is our God. that we caught sin and shame They were like prisons that we couldn't escape But he came and he died and he rose Those walls are rubble now Remember those giants we called death and grave They were like mountains that stood in our way But he came and he died and he rose Those giants are dead now This is our God, this is who he is He loves us This is our God, this is what he does He saves us He bore the cross the grave that heaven and earth proclaim this is our God King Jesus remember that fear that took our breath away faith so weak that we could barely pray but he heard every word every whisper Now those altars in the wilderness Tell the 
story of his faithfulness Never once did he fail And he never will This is our God This is who he is He loves us This is our God This is what he does Jesus, who pulled me out of that pit, he did, he did, who paid for all of our sin, nobody but Jesus, who rescued me from that grave, Yahweh, Yahweh, who gets the glory and praise, nobody but Jesus, who rescued me from that grave. trees let go of their autumn leaves and they fall to the ground. Changing our lives also means letting go of things that, that are past. God has something else in store for us for the present and the future but this does not mean that we should lose sight of the past. We have much to remember with thankfulness and both happy and painful lessons to learn from it because our past experiences help to shape who we are at, in the present. Autumn leaves are falling in the ground at the moment. And I remember living in Gan village, walking home from school at this time of year and shuffling through the piles of leaves and kicking them everywhere, not realising what creepy crawlies were hiding in those leaves. But those fallen leaves were there both to protect and feed the new growth emerging when spring comes. The people of Israel love to remember the stories of God's providential care for them. They gave them the faith and courage they needed to face the present and the future. Those same stories, stories we read in the Bible give us the same hope and guidance to live our lives today and into the future. We read from Psalm 111 this today. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the council of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, enacted in faithfulness and uprightness. 
he provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. This psalm praises God for his faithfulness and enduring righteousness over time. So while as human beings, when we praise God, sometimes only praise him for what he has done in the past. But this psalm also praises the God, our God for who he is, for his character and nature. The psalm the psalmist highlights God's enduring righteousness, how he is gracious and compassionate, how his works are faithful and how he remembers his covenant with his people. Those are only a few. The psalm reassures us that God is faithful always and he was with us during our past. He is with us now and will continue to be faithful to us as we move into the future. God's love endures forever for us, his people, and as life changes, just like the seasons, we must have faith that what is in the past will help us reshape our lives as we do God's will. Just like the fallen leaves feed new growth moving into spring. Moving on to our New Testament, we re hear some verses from Hebrews chapter 11 going into chapter 12. Starting with verses 1 to 3 of chapter 11. Faith in action. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commanded for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Then moving on to chapter 11 verses 8 to 12. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him, of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful, who had made the promises. And so from this one man, and he, as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. And lastly, moving to chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Some changes in life can make us anxious because they can mean uncertainty and we can often make excuses for putting them off. But we should remember that if we don't respond to God's call in the present moment, we may miss out on what he has to offer us. As the leaves fall, we may be so caught up mourning the end of summer or so preoccupied worrying about what winter will bring that we do not notice how beautiful the autumn days are. God is God of the past, God of the present and lastly, God of the future. Looking to the future is where we see change most clearly, even if it makes us anxious. But because of our faith as Christians, we have been given a sure hope for the future amidst all the change and upheaval of our daily lives. To have faith is to be sure of the things we hope for, to be certain of the things we cannot see. It was by their faith that people of ancient times won God's approval. It is by faith that we understand that the universe was created by God so that what can be seen was made out of what cannot be seen. We've heard in our passage from Hebrews that it was faith that made Abraham able to become a father even though he was too old and Sarah herself could not have children. He trusted to keep his God he trusted God to keep his promise. It was faith that made Abraham obey what God called him to go obey when God called him to go out to a country which God had promised to give him. He left his own country without knowing where he was going. Such was Abraham's faith. He changed where he lived, which turned out to be a tent, without knowing what his new home would be like, because he knew that was God's will. Abraham would be living in a place that God had designed and built the city with permanent foundations. Though Abraham was old in years, he and Sarah created many descendants, as it says in our Hebrews passage, as many as there are stars in the sky, as many as the numberless grains of sand on the seashore. Then in Hebrews 12, 12 verses 1 to 2, it says, as for us, we have this large crowd of witnesses around us, so we must rid ourselves of everything that gets in the way. So, as our human nature sometimes gets in our way to listening to God, because we want to be in control of our lives instead of letting God, we must turn to God and let him take control to show us his will. We must have the same firm faith as Abraham, and keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, on whom the foundation of our faith should be built on from beginning to end. Dying on the cross did not stop Jesus defeating death. He rose to new life and gave us hope that we can start again in a new relationship with our Father God. He also sent a guide, a helper, the Holy Spirit, to be with us in our faith journey through change after change after change and throughout each season that comes. As we go into the season of autumn, we can face any change in the knowledge that God is faithful to us. His love should fill us with the urge to show that love to the world around us. His faithfulness endures forever. No matter what our past experiences are, he is with us now and will never leave us. Whatever changes we face on our faith journey, God will guide. He will reassure and love us from the beginning to the end and beyond. Amen.
We come now to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. God of our past, our present and our future, we pray for the world where nothing stays the same. Governments come and go, wars are fought and peace treaties signed. Rains fail, the earth quakes, mountains erupt and rivers flood. We think especially at this time of all those countries and places around the world who are experiencing war or unrest. We think of the Middle East, of Ukraine. We ask that you rest your healing peaceful hand upon all the situations, all those involved. Give them a sense of hope. Give them a want for peace as they strive towards it. We also pray for those places in the world where there's been natural disaster. We pray that all those bringing aid, all those that are suffering because they've lost loved ones and livelihoods and homes. We ask that you be with them as they build, rebuild their lives. Give them a strength and hope of a new way forward. We pray for the world that is always changing, asking that in the midst of change, humankind might find you, the unchanging God, at work and find reasons for hope and joy. God of our past, our present and our future, we pray for the church where nothing stays the same. Ways of worshipping come and go. Beliefs are challenged by new ways of thinking. The Spirit constantly renews your people. We learn to live and share together. We pray for the church that is always changing, asking that in the midst of change, Christians might find you, the unchanging God, at work and find reasons for hope and joy. God of our past, our present and our future, we pray for our own lives when nothing stays the same. Happiness comes and goes, we experience and learn and grow. Unexpected events alter everything we suffer illness and loss. We pray for our lives that are always changing, asking that in the midst of change, we might find you, the unchanging God at work and find reasons for hope and joy. In the name of Jesus Christ, who came to change the world. Amen. We now sing the hymn, All My Hope on God is Founded.
Thank you for joining me this Wednesday and before we have our final blessing I just want to share a poem called The Season of Life by Deborah Ann Belker. The seasons of life blow in like the wind, some are slow moving, others like a whirlwind. But I have found, no matter the season, whatever blurs my way, God has for it a reason. The seasons of life have their highs and lows. The cause behind them only God really knows. But I have found, seasons are a blessing urging me into the goal to just keep pressing. The seasons of life blow in and out, some like a whisper, others with a shout. But I have found each season sent to me keeps me trusting God for what I cannot see. And just a final blessing. Through all the changing scenes of life, may the blessing of the God of love encircle each one of us, now and evermore. Amen.